Hey team, Jordan here, and I am super excited about this interview. I'm here with Hunter and Sarah from Hunter and Sarah Photography, and I believe they joined about almost two years ago now. And Hunter, he was keeping in touch with me in touch with me a little bit as they've kind of go, gone through their process. Last year, they, they broke six figures, hit $135,000 in revenue. Uh, Hunter just sent me a message recently. They're close and on their way to hitting $200,000 a year. So it's super exciting. Congrats on your guys' results. Thank you guys for hopping on this student interview as well. How's it going? It's going good. We're doing we're doing really well over here. Yeah, busy. I mean, it's it's mid October. It's wedding season here in Virginia, but we're doing great. <laughs> awesome, awesome. But yeah, let's dive into the, some of these questions and, and see how we can help uh, the rest of the students as well. So, getting a, a feel of this also. So, you know, last year after hitting six figures, you mentioned that about fifty percent of your bookings came from strategies taught in the WLMA. What was a huge factor in, in helping you double your, your revenue and everything? Yeah, absolutely. I think, so just to give you like, just so we all know we're all on the same page, um, we've been doing the kind of model call free yeah. engagement session contest. Um, and we have been running, you know, a, a 12 week email series as well as uh, the Facebook group um, for engaged brides. And uh, we, have we're now on kind of our third iteration we we call it kind of our third iteration uh, of that process um there have been kind of a couple points throughout the last like you said we, we joined the program um almost two and a half years ago and got our mm. funnel up running a little more than two years ago so there have been a couple points where we've kind of like paused everything and just totally revamped um our email series and kind of re-looked at the way we do everything but um honestly the biggest thing i think uh that has helped us to scale on top of just the fact that a lot of weddings were pushed off last year. So this is a crazy, crazy wedding year, um, 2021. But I think the biggest thing is that we have just been able to scale the, uh, the you know, we call it the J-Core sales funnel around here. <laughs> That's just what we call it. Um, just easier than WLMA. But uh, we, we kind of scaled our sales funnel. Um, you know, we took our ads from $10 a month when we first started to 20 to 30 which has just brought, increased the volume of people coming in, which over time has increased the volume of qualified leads. Even though um, since we started in 2019, our prices have gone, I mean, almost doubled. We were probably $3,500 start our starting package. Now we're booking um, starting at six. And, uh, and I think we would not have been able to also grow in volume at the same time as growing in price uh, without something like this sales funnel that we've been running. That's amazing. That's amazing. And kind of get diving into like that a little bit that as well. So you mentioned like going from like $10 a day in ad spend to $230 a day in ad spend. Have you guys felt as, as you've, you know, doing that has a huge part been like figuring out those systems, kind of figuring out your data, your numbers, and kind of um, getting a feel of if I spend this much, how many leads you'll get, how without convert into and all that as well. Tell me a little bit about your experience with that. Yeah, it. Um, I, I handle most of the ads, so I, I will be yeah. speaking to Sarah yeah. for a little bit. But um, yeah, I think the the and, and maybe not everyone will be excited to hear this, but it is all about getting deep in the weeds with your numbers and understanding mm. so like what they are telling you. So we, um, you know, and this is just like as you suggest in the course, you know, Facebook will give you some data, but we have a spreadsheet that we you know created back when we first started that is gonna just take that data combined with some of the data we're getting from MailChimp, that's who we use for our newsletter, um, about, you know, how many people are entering and how many of them are actually qualified, you know, have uh, the right budget or say they have the right budget kind of to fit in um, as a potential client of ours. And so we're able to know things like, for example, when we went from uh, $10 a day to $20 a day, mm -hmm. um, our, our cost of lead, our cost per qualified lead went up by about $3 per lead, you know, went from like 17 bucks per qualified lead to about 20, um, which, uh, you know, feels like a lot, but if we convert one out of every 10 qualified leads, you know, for $6,000, that's still a huge return on investment. So yeah. um, when we went from 20 to 30, the cost per lead barely changed at all. Mm. And to that, what that means to us is, okay, the ads that we're running, the way that we're converting, all of these things is scalable. 
as in we put more money in, we get just as much more money out. We are kind of yeah. worried about this concept of like, you know, diminishing marginal returns where you put more in, but you get a little bit less each time um, because we're just like so in the weeds with all of our data. We were able to look at it and say, okay, we went from $20 a day to $30 a day and our profitability went up by just that amount. So um, yeah. we've been at $30 a day, you know, it's almost a thousand dollars a month on ads for yeah. uh, about six months or so. So uh, because we have still converting, you know, even at, even at six to $8,000 is our wedding bookings. Um, so we're ready. Probably we're going to scale again here pretty soon um, as we just raised our prices again. So we're going to scale pretty soon, probably go up to 35 or $40 a day on ads. Yeah. And I think it's really, really important to be in the numbers, especially if you're, if you're like me and you're really like risk averse or very cautious, yeah. just seeing the return on investment for that, like saying, Hey, you're going to go from spending $20 a day to $30 a day. That sounds like a lot. That sounds kind of scary, mm -hmm. but yeah. being able to see the actual return on investment and seeing how your money is working actually makes it a lot easier to make those decisions. So I think that if someone is going to jump in that, that's a really important thing to do. And it's something that's really going to help you in the long run. Yeah. When you know your numbers, you know, your systems, it, it puts a sense of comfort, even, even with the risks and everything. Cause you know, at, you guys have run like $17,000 in ads, but you guys know this by, by this point, you'll have months where, where suddenly there's like weeks where it's like really bad. And then yeah. there's like, there's regress of the mean, then suddenly it does like really well. But when you know your numbers and you know, you're doing everything right, it's like, okay, we know that our averages as a whole is like this, we're good. It's like, yeah. we're good. If we keep running this ad spend, it's going to come into play like in a few weeks or in a month or whenever, whenever you find those baselines and everything. Correct. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you recently made a post about results you found split testing, which I think is, is super important. What have you learned from your split tests? Yeah, so we we uh, we run all of our Facebook ads for like a two week block, all of our um, and then we let the ad end. we um, kind of duplicate, we create a new one. But every time we create a new ad, we try to split test something. So that's, you know, over the last two years, that's more than a hundred tests. Um, and for a long time, the biggest thing that we were testing is what image is going to get engaged brides from seeing our ad to actually applying for the contest. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we have shot like all over the country. We've shot internationally. We have just in crazy, beautiful, incredible images of these beautiful spots. Great look is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, and, and to our shock, a picture of Sarah and I was beating all of these great photos, which I never would have thought. Um, of course, the more that I think about it, the more it makes sense. But um, that was something that was really surprising to me. And we've we've tested that out a bunch of different times in a bunch of different ways. And literally 10 times out of 10, a nice photo that we had another photographer take of Sarah and I kind of holding our cameras, smiling right next to each other, converts way better um, than, than pictures of our couples who look way better than us in way better, you know, beautiful locations, Epic shots, beautiful backdrops, doesn't matter. Just a nice photo of us smiling with the camera uh, always it converts always, better. It always converts better. Which, I, oh, yeah. yes. I was going to say, I think that like, no matter where you are, you have other photographers in your price range who like are competing with you for those same couples, but like you are what makes the difference in your business. Hmm. So it, it makes sense that <clears throat> people are going to be drawn in by the person who's willing to say like, hey, this is me. Yeah. This is what like this is what you're going to show up to your session and find exactly so it's definitely it's more it's a more compelling image um, yeah, it puts so more it, trust almost yeah, when they actually get absolutely. to see you isn't that kind of crazy too it's like you can have the same <coughs> marketing you can have you know the the same areas you're hitting and sometimes just like that change of the photo can make the same ad explode and everything and chris and i've experienced like the same thing too like usually our ads now it's like photos of us Sometimes I've seen, even if it's like a phone video or even yeah. like a selfie, those, yeah. really well, or like a phone video of like behind the scenes of us, like shooting, mm -hmm. can, it can be like a really crappy, like video too. It's like not even yeah. like up to par, but just cause it, it seems more like organic, like people love it and it really gets the attention. But I think that's awesome. That's awesome. So getting a, a feel of, of this also. So I guess, you know, for people who want to increase ad spend as well. Maybe they've been stuck at like $10 a day. They've been worried about like that next jump. What are some key lessons you've learned as far as managing, like managing, they make that jump, how they should manage their ads um, to kind of scale further and everything. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And what's, what's funny, and this, this sounds almost like too good to be true. Um, but 
after, I don't know, six months or so of uh, running Facebook ads, someone from Facebook reached out to me. And this, if you run Facebook ads, this has certainly happened to you and to anyone. Um, and they're basically like, hi, I'm a Facebook marketing expert. I'd love to help you <laughs> with whatever you're doing. And I was so, I got these emails for months. I was so skeptical. I was like, no, they're just going to try to, you know, get me to spend more, blah, blah, blah. I finally met with one of them and, you know, Facebook's algorithms and the, all the back end stuff is evolving so quickly that to have someone who actually works that literally sat down with us for 30 minutes, did a little screen share, you know, I was chatting and she was just like, here's three things that could help. And they always did. So I, now every time I get one of those emails, it's been at least a couple months, maybe yeah. every six months or so I hop on with one. And that is like, not a very sexy piece of advice. <laughs> it's, but it's yeah. very, it's like, literally their job is to make your ads run better because they know if you're getting better results, you'll spend more money and more time using their platform. So it's in their best interest to make your ads work. So it was actually like, after seeing some of those improvements that I had, um, you know, little things that I just would never have known to do that I was like, okay, like this is running even better than before. Now I feel like I can kind of scale up. But um, another yeah. really important thing is like, that the rest of your sales funnel is also like of high quality, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think the there were like some things that we actually did to our our email series. Uh, the kind of the first iteration was just a lot of tips, a lot of like engagement session tips, wedding planning tips, like how to get ready for your session. The emails yeah. are so long. I just like mm. was like, I'm gonna give all the value I can, and I wrote all of these without Sarah. That was the mistake. Um, you know, like, guys, <laughs> I've done the same. Right? I, I, so, um, so that when we kind of redid it the second time, Sarah and I, or maybe it was the third time, um, we sat down together and we're like, let's make this actually less informative, but more fun, more engaging, and more personal. Mm -hmm. And our our conversion went way up on on our mm -hmm. most recent email series um, because it was like, so you know, because you can run the best ads in the world, and if they're getting the email series and it's flat and boring and doesn't add value or, or doesn't, you know, improve your, your potential couple's lives. Like you just spent a bunch of money to do nothing. Right? Yeah, we like definitely worked ourselves into the series as well. So it was yeah. a really beautiful opportunity to be almost more vulnerable. So, you know, you open up the email and it's a picture of like me with my camera. Hello, you've made it to the <laughs> yeah. series. And then uh, at the bottom of all of the emails, we actually did um, just like a, a fun fact about us. Yeah. something a, a personal fun fact about us whether it's like we we have an espresso machine and we love making lattes every morning for me hunter makes exactly them. i don't make them but and then, just fun facts yeah. like that to, and, and all that. of those little fun facts lead to a post on our blog that's just either like for clients or personal to just like if people are just like can't get enough of like us which of course is so weird to think about but like if they're <laughs> really engaging and vibing and they want more like here's an opportunity to end up in this wormhole of our blog that, you know, exactly. for six years now, there's all sorts of content, both couples and like items from our wedding registry that we loved. Or um, we, we wrote a blog at the beginning of this year um, about our intentional date night questions that we ask each other every week when we have yeah. date night. And um, I mean, Sarah knows from talking to uh, people in the sales funnel that, I mean, people love that, right? People, that's probably the most engaging email from the whole series that we have is okay. the, the state night questions. People respond to that through the email. They respond to it through Instagram, through Facebook, just thanking us for putting that out there, telling us how it's impacted their relationship, That's how they're so working cool. it into their date nights. So and, just and, and it has nothing to do with photography, nothing to do with engagement sessions. I, I love that though. And that's one thing that's key. It's because like sometimes with like email marketing, you know if you're not with social media it's so much easier it's like you know you follow certain influencers you feel like you connect like with this person virtually with emails you know there is that layer of like who is this it's is it a scam you know uh now spam email but when you can get them to get beyond that it takes more work 100 percent believe it it takes more work and i can see you guys have put that work into it and, and get them to connect with you i feel like that's where it changes the game with like email marketing and getting them to fall in love with like your personal brand, but that virtual connection with the two of you and everything, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Let me, so I'll just, I'll say just related to that, our previous sales funnel that we were running, the previous email series that was really heavy on content and a little bit lighter on personality. Um, we, we, we ran that through, it was basically most of 2020. Of course, things were pretty rough in 2020. We weren't shooting as many weddings. So we were giving out a lot 
more like we had I think two or three winners a month instead of like one winner a month like we were giving out way more free engagement sessions we were like you know what it keeps us busy in a time that's pretty slow um and there's always a decent chance I mean we, we believe we're good at what we do so we're like there's a pretty good chance that once they have that experience with us they'll book us for their wedding um so you know I, I had the numbers pulled up we gave out we had about 25 free engagement sessions during that funnel. We booked about half of those. We booked 13 weddings from that. That's amazing. So that means for every two sessions we would go out and shoot, we would book one wedding. Yeah. Now on the more recent one that we've been running, and of course 2020 has been a much 2021 has been a much busier year. Um, we are we have only given out you know a handful of free engagement sessions across the whole year, but we have booked um, what is it 11 weddings. So mm -hmm. we're now booking two weddings for every session we give out, rather than rather than uh, two sessions awesome. for every one that wedding snowball effect compound effects kind yeah, of so, and everything exactly so because our email series is is doing the selling for us so people get to week seven or week 12 and they're like oh my gosh you guys are the best like please are can you come shoot my That's wedding amazing. rather than us having to give them something for free just to get in the door with them and honestly like just what sarah said making our email series less info dense and more personal I think has been a big part of that, as well as some other things that Sarah has been handling. Yeah. Um, so I actually reach out to all of our really highly qualified brides through Instagram and yeah. just ask them some questions about, you know, like what, what the session would mean to them and like their potential, their partner, what, like what a session with us would mean. Like, why did they pick us? We know that there are a lot of sessions out there. So why, why enter into our session and just how wedding planning is going just to see if this is, a person that we, we connect with and kind of let them know, hey, I'm a real person. I'm an actual human yeah. being reaching out to you. You're not you're not interacting with a faceless conglomerate business. You're interacting yeah. <laughs> with Sarah of Hunter and Sarah Photography. Yeah. Uh, and I think it just adding that additional personal touch uh, just gets them much more engaged and Love that. personalizes us even more. This this was a tip we picked up probably a year ago um, from the Facebook group. Uh, cause I, you know, so this is not anything we invented, but yes. we have like our standard three questions that Sarah asks. And, um, yeah, that, that has also made a big difference in like people that we, we don't give them anything for free. We don't end up giving them the session, but just because Sarah had those handful of touch points exactly. and I used to do it. And then all of a sudden we were like, wait, bride is going to connect way better with brides. Cause it's always brides that are entering, not the groom. So Sarah took over it and the, I mean, the engagement has just been crazy and people engage more with our, our, um, our social media, I think in general. And yes. kind of at the same time she started doing that, we we did the Facebook group um, that Sarah is also in there dropping posts. And I mean, half of it is just like funny stuff. Some of it's and, just like a gif of how your week is going. Yeah, but um, all of those little personal connections have meant so much more than like the actual, you know, about, like, value instead of being so deep in value, kind of like keeping it more fun and, and lighthearted and everything as well. Yeah. Yeah. So and, if you were to give like, say two, two to four bullet points, on maybe students who are struggling with their with their VIP group or struggling with their email series, what are a couple bullet points you would give students that you feel like could be huge to really help bring up their engagement, uh, their conversions from there and everything? I think my first tip would be to be more vulnerable. Hmm. Just, but there are a lot of these contests out there. There are a lot of photographers in your area, but you are the difference in your business. Right, so, Hunter and Sarah photography, like Hunter and Sarah, what makes the difference as much as anything else? Like if you book us or you book someone else, we are gonna show up at your wedding versus that other person. So oh. just being vulnerable and letting them know you're you're another human being. Hmm. You might have very similar things in common. You, you want to be someone they relate to. You want them to look at you and be like, this is someone I could see in my getting ready suite as I put my wedding dress on. Yes. Um, so just being more vulnerable, being more, being more open with kind of who you are and what, what makes your, your business different, which mm -hmm. is you. And I think I'll, I'll be the, I'll be the yin to Sarah's yang there. She, you know, she gave the, the qualitative, the, the vulnerability. I'm going to say again, like, like know the numbers. Um, mm. One of the things that we did is when we, we kind of ended our, our first, uh, the first iteration of our sales funnel. And after everyone had gone through that, so we didn't actually have this data until we'd already started the next one, but you know, it's a 12 week funnel. And at the end of it, we said, okay, where are people clicking? Cause they want to, they, the post was, or the email was so engaging. They want to engage more. Exactly. And where are people unsubscribing? Because it was so just, they're like, I'm done with Hunter and Sarah. Right. And of course the call to action emails always have the highest unsubscribe rate. We know that's going to happen, um, yeah. but we paid attention to the other ones. We said, oh, this one's really engaging, but it's at week 10. Let's put that at week 
two before they find out whether or not they've won. Because of course, they gave me exactly. somebody the highest before they find. So we just, we looked at the data. We, we, um, we actually got, a, we sent a survey. I forgot we did this actually until just now. We, we got a group of a bunch of our past brides and some friends of ours that are just like around this age that were married or, or engaged or whatever. And we sent them like a, a 30 point bullet point list of um, a bunch of articles we had written and a bunch that we yeah. hadn't that we were like, we could write this if people thought it was interesting. And we just said, imagine you just got engaged and this pop, one of these popped up, like, would you click this? Would you be interested in this? And we actually used that data that real brides gave That's us awesome. to, to inform the type of value add content we were giving. Um, but then of course, you know, as soon as Sarah looked at all the stuff that I'd written, she was like, this is not personal enough. Let's add our picture in there a bunch. Let's make it more fun. Let's shrink it down about half size. Like, you know, you know, when you get an email and you get, you get to the bottom and it says like view full email, it's way too long. Right. And like, yeah. I feel like half of our emails are probably in that boat. So, um, awesome. Awesome. And those, those key are key together. Like one, so they have your vulnerable. So they really see that personal brand really get to know both of you knowing the data working together. I love the way you two work as well. It reminds me of me and Crystal. It's like, usually like, I'm really bad when it comes to like design stuff. She'd be like, what did you do? And just like, <laughs> totally picks that up. Or like, usually like I'll, I'll, I'll write something and then she'll like refine it. Kind of, I didn't, I didn't uh, plan this question as well. What has, you know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, couples that work together as well. What are some, what are some ways, uh, some key ways that you guys have like learned to work together to like really emphasize on each other's strengths, all that type of stuff as well. I think something interesting that we did actually when we kind of first started working together was we, we know it's just us, but we made yeah. ourselves VP of specific, specific things. So if, if yeah. we were an office of 30 people, you know, there would be a VP of like social media and marketing. There'd be a VP mm -hmm. of like accounting and like finances. So we, we actually assigned each other a specific task. Exactly. So we knew like what falls under your purview, what are you responsible for? You okay. know, that like, I'm, I'm not responsible for like keeping track of our leads like that is Hunter. So yeah. I don't have to worry about responding to an email and having that get missed. Yeah, we like, of course, we are always available to help the other with whatever the task is. Exactly. But at the end of the day, like someone needs to be responsible as the like, this is my job. Exactly. If I need help, I need to ask. But unless I verbalize that, the assumption is that I'm going to do it. And we literally went through everything that happens in our business. Everything needs to happen. We assigned it out. And then we like did that for a few months and we're like, how's this going? And we like shifted some things or if it seemed like one of us was way busier than the other pretty consistently, we'd be like, okay, what can I take from you? Or what can you take from me to just try and make it like, but again, we did that all of that in mind with like our particular strengths, um, you know, like, and, and all that good stuff. Um, exactly. I think the most important thing I would say for us working together, you know, we work together, we live together. We're always together um so yeah. i think having some separation of you know work versus personal yeah. so having one night a week that we designate as our date night and that is no right. business we just talk about how we're doing personally how we're loving each other 100%. outside of the business mm -hmm. um how we can pursue each other in that i think that was that was probably one of the most important things i know that doesn't have to do with no, I 100% agree, though, because it can consume you like when you're running a business, especially as a, a couple, like I've even caught myself like that, like we go on like a dinner date or something. And like, that's like what's on my <laughs> on my mind, yeah, you know, yeah. strategies, all this type of stuff. But I think that's key. Love that. Love that. And we and we know that like inevitably over dinner, business stuff is going to come up and all that. And we like we don't try to <laughs> we don't try to like keep a really hard barrier. because Sometimes your best idea comes at 730 or whatever. Exactly. Um, but we, like Sarah said, one night a week, we set aside um, specifically for that, uh, you know, that specific date. I, I was going to say our division of labor and our date night. So um, we're, we're on saying, it. Yeah, we're on it. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> so my, my, one of my favorite topics, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about sales, you know, after the past, you know, uh, two and a half years of doing all these wedding consultations and, and everything as well. What have you learned that has brought on, on more bookings? So I think the first thing that I'll say is that um, is that we really try to focus on selling or or even communicating um, an experience, not a product. Right? This is like this is a pretty uh, prevalent kind of marketing philosophy, especially with millennials and Gen Zs who who are 
you know, the majority of our, our uh, market clientele right now um, is that we, we focus very little on like, this is how many photos you get and this is how many hours of coverage. And like, we talk about those things because of course, you know, it's important to hit those, but that's the last mm. five minutes of what is typically an hour long meeting. Um, we yes. spend, we, we, we walk through our, our, our portfolio in a way that translates exactly to what a wedding day with us looks like. And we, yeah. we talk about it like, you know, uh, oh yeah, Arlene, like, like Sarah's going to be in your suite. And then I'm going to be hanging with you doing this and that. And we use our names and we, we, we like almost describe it as though they've already hired us and we're just telling them what their wedding day will be like. Mm. And because it's so experiential rather than just like, we provide eight hours of coverage into photographers and this is our gear. Like, these are my photos. Do you like them higher? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Cause there's like, you know, there, again, like there's so many, there's so many, especially at our, you know, where we're at, we're booking six to 8,000. Like you don't get to this level without being good at what you do, right? Anyone else in our market who's at this level is good at wedding photography. Yes. So we've got to set ourselves apart in some other way. And for us, that first one is the experience. I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah, I think the next part is just setting expectations. Mm -hmm. I really like to help set expectations with our clients of like, if you want these, you know, these beautiful detail shots with all of your, your jewelry and your perfume and your florals, like, here's what you need to do to get that. Like you need to kind of help set those expectations of like, here's a wedding day, what it looks like with us. Here's an expectation that we will fulfill if you hire us. I think that's something that we always do is set expectations with each other as well as with our clients. And that's yeah. a big part of what I think our sales meeting is about is selling the experience and also setting an expectation for what to expect with their experience with us. 100%. Love that. That's actually not not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to talk about kind of, again, the, the personal connection, um, uh, like, cause you know, <clears throat> and, and I'm sure, and you know, hopefully everyone who does sales meetings does this, but when we hop on a video chat, you know, and we, we intend it to be 45 minutes to an hour, we're going to spend at minimum the first 10, 15 minutes, just like, how'd you guys meet? How'd you get engaged? What's wedding planning been like? Like, tell us more and just asking, asking, asking questions, like just getting to know them. And then later, once we're off the video call, taking notes on all those things, um, you know, just so that when we see them again, we don't, it's not like meeting them again for the first time, yeah. but um, yeah, just like, just again, the personal connection is so important. Like we want them to fall in love with us as much as we, because if they've inquired on our website, we know they like our photos. We don't exactly. need to convince them to good photos. We need to convince them that we are going to be the right people to be with them on the most important day of their life for, you know, eight to 12 hours. And if we're not, we absolutely don't want them to hire us, right? Yeah. Like it's just as much about figuring out who the less than great uh, fits are as well as like finding those. So I always talk to uh, our couples about, you know, when my bride is getting into her dress, it's usually me, my bride and her mom in the room when she's changing out of one mm -hmm. outfit and putting her wedding dress on. You want to like me <laughs> if I'm going to be in the room during that very exactly. moment. Yeah. So I want them to connect with me as a friend. Um, so a, a big part of the meeting is selling the experience, selling the experience that we give and also selling ourselves. Exactly. Like you get, you get Hunter, you get me, you get me and you're getting ready to eat. You get Hunter as like a bonus groomsman for the day. <laughs> like we will be there for those really vulnerable moments. And we'll show them, you know, here's what a first look looks like. We want you to do a first look. So when you cry as a groom, it's private. Mm -hmm. And we kick and everyone out. Yeah. And so we, we really like, again, set expectations, personal, all that good stuff. But I don't, mm -hmm. I, I have no point of reference for whether this is comparable or good or bad or whatever. But I, I know that this year um, we're converting like 68% of video yes, calls. Let's go. Like, so, um, like, I, 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 I have to guess that's pretty good. Um, yes, we've, actually had years, <laughs> we've, we've had years where it's been even higher. Um, we've had years where it's been a little bit lower, but, um, you know, we're booked for 40 weddings this year. Um, this is our, this is our 40 wedding year. We hope to never have another one. <laughs> um, we, we're, we're down from here in quantity, but, uh, yeah, yeah I, I like that. We take that part, that part, you know, the, the sales meeting itself, like that's such an important part of the business. And I'm again, like, we iterate, like we do something and we hang up and I might look at Sarah and be like, the, what you said when we were talking about the getting ready photos this time, like, I've never heard you say that before. We need to include that. Or she'll look at me and be like, Hey, the way you phrased that thing about the first look transition, I don't, I don't know that that's going to connect with people. I think we should maybe don't say that on the next one. Like we have that feedback for each other, not every time, but occasionally 
Um, and when that's we hit key. something good, that's key. Like, or the right yeah. words and like how you say things. That's one thing yeah. I'm really passionate. Like tonality, the way you say things, the right yeah. words is, is, is super key. I, I love all those points here because I remember like before I even like knew what I was doing with sales. It was like these awkward meetings. It was all about the features. It's like you get. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. that's yeah. what I thought they they wanted to hear, and yeah, ghosted like all the time. <laughs> it's like as I as I learned, you know, I would have these specific stories that I, I tell. It's like I'd go mm -hmm. through these yeah. photos. There are certain I use the same stories like every time too. Oh and yeah, depending on emphasizing on certain ones depending on the couple, and then it turned into like instead of them focus on like the features that they can compare with everyone else this emotional story that they connected to mm. and yeah. then I'd see like that shine in their eye and it was like over <laughs> yeah. Point, yeah. You know I mean? no you're you're so right I mean wedding photography is, is such an emotional based decision um so like connecting emotionally with them personally emotionally like that that is I mean it's, it's almost everything it's such an important thing exactly love that so now I want to hear one of these from from each of you what okay. is one piece of advice that you can give uh, students in the program uh, to continue bringing in more results? Okay. I think something that I struggled with initially was putting myself out there, was being mm -hmm. vulnerable with a bunch of random strangers. Like just, it feels weird to put, you know, a cheesy Hard. photo of you smiling with your camera. It feels weird to put yourself out there. So I would say just be confident. Like you are a you're a business person. Like yes. you are more than capable of doing what you do. So we see it almost as a disservice if we are not shooting someone's wedding. Yes. If I am not in your getting ready suite, if I am not marketing to you well, I am doing you a disservice. Mm. So in feeling kind of awkward about asking questions or talking to brides, I'm doing them a disservice. So I want, I want all the people kind of watching to just be confident in themselves. Like you, 100%. you are good at what you do. You will continue to improve what you do and get better. Um, but you can't serve couples if you're not putting yourself out there. So just kind of embrace the weird, embrace the awkward and go for it. Love that. Love that. I relate with that as well. Most people don't, don't see this in me. I'm, I'm very in introverted. And so it took me like a while to be like, all right, I just gotta like, even when it came to consultations a long time ago, like, <laughs> just do it, <laughs> you know, just put myself out there, be vulnerable, uh, all that stuff as well. I love that tip. How about you, Hunter? <clears throat> um, I'm glad you said that, Sarah. Uh, mine is gonna be that there, there is no such thing. Dean Graziosi says this all the time. There's no such thing as a magic money machine, right? Mm. Like the, the WL, W, the J core funnel is not, uh, <laughs> it, is, it is not just you create it once you click go and it just makes you thousands and thousands yes. of dollars without doing anything. Right. You have to put the work in, but if you do, if, if you like grind out, I mean, when we redid our, our most recent sales funnel, I literally think it was during the winter slow season. Um, you mm -hmm. know, we're coming up on another one. Mm -hmm. It was like every day for months, we were tweaking everything we can. We were reading them out loud to each other to make sure that the flow was good. I mean, like, but if you put the work in and then every couple of weeks, you are mm. touching little things here and there, always improving, always iterating. Like I was talking about, you know, every two weeks, let's try a different photo. Um, it is, it, it has been like, seriously, it's been like rocket fuel for our business. I mean, yes. I, I was looking at it earlier. I think I have some numbers pulled up on your other screen. I think something like 70% of the weddings we're going to shoot in 2022 right now, we're booked through our sales funnel. Um, I mean, that, that means, that means we would have 30% of the business that we have right now, if we were not had, we're not using this marketing. And if we have 30% of the business, our prices, would, we would not be in the six to 8,000 range. You know, we'd be, we'd still be in the four to six or, or whatever. So it's like, man, we, we, we took the time, we got the capabilities from you and people in the group. And, and, and then we went beyond that and we tested our own stuff and we tried different Good. things and we, and we, we learned from other sources and we just took all this information you know, stuff like Sarah DMing people on Instagram, like that was something we, we, re we read someone said it, we gave it a try for a couple of weeks. Hey, I think it's working. Let's try it. You know, we've done things that haven't worked and we've been like, that is not worth doing. Let's give up on that. Um, and because we've been willing to iterate, like this has been huge for our business. And um, so, yeah, we're just, I, you know, no, mad, no such thing as a magic money machine. It's not just to click it once and forget it forever, but you put the time in, man, it's huge. 
Awesome. Awesome. There is so much gold nuggets in this amazing interview, amazing interview. And, and where can we find you guys as well? Website, social media, all that stuff as well. Yeah. So you can find us, I mean, you can find us on our website. So I think it's Hunter and Sarah.com. Sarah um, has an H at the end of it, just to be clear. S-A-R-A-H. Perfect. If you search that Facebook, Instagram, uh, website, we're just Hunter and Sarah everywhere. Um, we are Hunter and Sarah H and Hunter and Sarah S on Instagram. We do have two separate Instagrams. It makes it a little more fun, but um, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's where we are. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you guys so much. This was amazing. Yeah, no, great chatting with you again, Jordan.